What is up, Nayana Nation? It's another day on God's green earth. Which means it's another day best spent making fun of Apollo Justice. Now look, I like this game. It's got like three good cases, a solid soundtrack, and some cool characters. But it's one of the most flawed entries in the franchise, and one of my biggest issues is how they handle both of their protagonists, Apollo and Phoenix. So to keep my content up, while I work on my, at this point, super long Investigations 1 video, I figured I'd take the time out of my schedule to make fun of the franchise's second favorite punching bag. Let's get into it. Now look, Apollo's not exactly bad in this game. He has a fun personality, and... Yeah, that's all they gave him. You see, Apollo's big problem in the story is a lack of... Anything substantial, really. Be it major relationship development or character arcs. He is portrayed as giving absolutely zero fucks about Kristoff's situation in the entire game in both of Kristoff's appearances, despite being his student for supposedly quite a long time. He doesn't have any big connection to most of the cast besides chemistry, which doesn't account for that much. With the exception of being Trucy, but this game and honestly the entire trilogy doesn't do anything with that since it's revealed right at the end of the game, then not even brought up again until the end of Spirit of Justice. A lot of the reason he's so damaged in this game is that the entire, and yes, I'm claiming the entire story focuses on Phoenix Wright as a main character compared to Apollo. The only cases where Apollo even gets to fully shine are the filler cases, which don't have any substance for his character beyond giving him cool moments to solve cases, which yes, that's a nice thing for the characters to have, but it's not enough to save them, at least for me. I don't care if they shoehorned in some line about it being Apollo's story from here on out. The game did such a disservice to Apollo with this. To fix it, I try to give him more relationship development with Kristoff. Maybe also set Trump later on the timeline to give him more screen time together. I'd also make Apollo have more of a bigger role beyond just being a pawn, as well as let him have more an impact on cases 1 and 4 beyond being the stand-in lawyer because Nick doesn't have a badge. Okay, so Apollo was mediocre. I'd flat out call this game's Phoenix bad. This section will be bigger because I have a bit more to cover, and I'm a lot more passionate about it. After all, this is a secret Phoenix Wright game. He has a lot more content to cover in this game in terms of writing. Starting in timeline order, his past self was altered to be very egotistical and condescending towards Clavier, which I find to be extremely out of character and hypocritical of Phoenix considering this is literally right after the trilogy, only two months ahead. They can't justify this extreme change in personality at all. It honestly feels like a disservice to the character to me, to the point whenever I end up replaying the game, I get angry whenever the section of the game shows up. I also don't buy him being disbarred so easily. First of all, the judge stops him from even defending himself, which is insane, and honestly I feel out of character for the judge who has been portrayed as a fairly just man up to this point, but I want to start cracking holes in the disbarment scene in general. First of all, we as players know Drew is telling the truth of course, but he didn't prove anything to the court. We saw the entire scene so there's no skirting around this. Drew said, yeah, I made it, I can tell from a symbol I left on it, but he didn't show the symbol, nor did he provide other substantial evidence. The main character of the entire franchise got his badge taken away over faulty, invalid testimony. I honestly feel like Phoenix's possible defense is like, hey, I literally got this case last minute and could not have time to perform a forgery. Hey, we can check security cameras and ask the guards in the lobby to show that I didn't even make this card and that I got it from the defendant's daughter. Hey, this guy's testimony isn't even actual evidence against me. Even if he was barred from defending himself in a trial, he surely must have at least tried bringing this up in his hearing, right? There's also the fact that he fell for this in the first place, like, in the fifth case of his career, he had a similar evidence trap and expertly outplayed his opponent, who laid his said trap out for him, with a trap better planned out than Kristoff's, I might add, and Rise from the Ashes was made before this game even came out, so it's not like they didn't know that. Hell, it's the only thing they made before Apollo Justice. If anything, you'd think it would be fresh in their minds, and they'd know Phoenix needs a tougher trick to fall. Maybe it's intended as pride blinding him, but like I said, I don't think that works for him. I think that's character assassination. Speaking of right after his trilogy, two months after Trials and Tribulations near perfect ending, he's disbarred! 
while having his character assassinated, I'm normally not this dramatic about it. I don't like, and I generally find it to be a big slap in the face to the first three games. And honestly, ever since I played this game, the trilogy just had a scar on it that I always feel whenever I go back to one of them, and I love those games. But every time I play them now, I think of how Phoenix's original journey, it just got fucked. Because right after it ended, he turned into a gigantic dickhead. And then he got his status as an attorney that he rose to the top over three games to achieve. Ripped away right after that. Fuck that. Okay, I think I need to calm down a little bit. Okay, turn about Trump. The intro to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney starts with Phoenix sidelining Apollo hard. However, I do gotta give the case a little bit of credit. Apollo gets more time to shine than normal here, than some say, with a lengthy section where he faces off with Olga Orly. But that still doesn't mean much when the entire story is ransacked by Phoenix's drama with main villain Christoph Gavin, and I do mean ransacked. Once this part kicks in, Apollo basically becomes the awkward gameplay man filling in for the unplayable protagonist who's getting the real attention. Not unlike the final witch trial, where Leighton is the main character, but you're awkwardly playing as Phoenix still. We get to the evidence forging thing, which I wholeheartedly believe Phoenix would never do to another attorney, knowing what it could do to them, especially after he went through it himself. Also, like, all things considered, with how easy it was to make forgery accusations that cost Phoenix his badge before the Dark Age of the Law, you'd think that when Kristoff screams forgery, it would prompt an immediate search of the card, leading to Phoenix's arrest and probably Apollo's disbarment. In a consistently written game, it would at least. I don't know how many remember this. The game's writers didn't at least. But illegal evidence was established in Rise from the Ashes, where even if something was proven by said evidence, it being illegal renders it invalid. This would absolutely halt Phoenix's plan in the consistently good written turn about Trump. I hate this part of the story. I do like the fan theory of Trucy forging the card and Phoenix being forced to go with it last minute, but not only is that not even hinted at, it's also extremely unlikely and clearly not what the writers intended, so it can't be used as a defense of the game itself and a valid interpretation, but rather a what-if scenario that would have kept Phoenix's character much more intact, while also keeping him morally grey, side active, since he didn't try to stop the card once Apollo threw it out there. But it doesn't actually help anything since it's not canon. Okay, last part. In Succession, it's a lot more of the same issues. Phoenix wildly overshadows Apollo, is a dick and secretive to him for quite literally no reason, like, I actually delayed this video to engage in discussions with Apollo Justice fans about his motivations, and most of it did come down, in my opinion, to him just being dumb. It's, it's not to say there isn't a defense that could be made, just that I disagree with any of the ones I've seen. The case gets minor, and I mean minor, credit for the Mason system. Not the game of the system itself, I actually think it's really bad, but the investigations are like one of, one of, if not the only part of the game where Phoenix feels mostly in character, as in character like some like a hobo Phoenix can be. But yeah, this section isn't as long because it would just be a repeat of most of the problems I have with Trump. Huh. To think the Apollo Justice Trilogy is my favorite era of Ace Attorney. After that rant, I bet you'd never think that. I want to restate I don't really hate this game at all, well, I mean, I hate Succession, but that's only one case. DD and SOJ certainly pick up the slack, though. Two of my favorite games and then the OK Apollo Justice definitely make for a solid trilogy. Even if I wish every day I could say I love Apollo Justice like I do the other two, I don't think the day will ever come when I can see all past the blunt, valid issues I take with it. That's about all I have to say, though. I'm gonna get back to working on the funny Quirkus Alba game analysis. Have a good day, or night, or whatever it is for you. Unless you think Nyad is a bad character, then I hope you die. Bye!